Welcome to my talk about cross-company collaboration in JIRA. How to make it work for everyone. I'm Matthias with K15T and I'm happy to tell you more about the challenges when you want to work together with other companies. So let's say you're part of a company Good Software. You are a member of a product team there and you build awesome products. Now you get another idea for a new product. But somehow you realize it's too big for you alone to handle. So what can you do? Wait until you find the right people to tackle it? Or postpone the new idea somehow? Luckily you're not alone in the world. And you know another clever company, Great Software, who has just the right skills and even capacity to help you out with your idea. So let's collaborate with them in order to bring your idea to life. But how are you collaborating easily? Which aspects are important for good collaboration? So we have collected some collaboration essentials based on various customer impressions in, in the last years. Not surprisingly, first of all, there's communication. You need a clear and easy way to communicate with your partner. How do you transport the information to your partner? And how do you receive it from them? Where is the information stored for later access? One special part of the communication is the responsibility. Who's actually responsible for a certain task right now? Who needs to act? Is it your turn? Or do you simply wait for the other side until they're finished? Who's working on it at your partner's side? In the end, you don't want to simply be informed about the current state but you want to get things done together. Reporting comes in many facets. As a project manager, you want to get an overview or report of all the tasks, including the status and possibly other details. Answering the question, how, get an, how can I get an easy overview of what's being worked on right now? In addition, you might want to go into visual reporting with charts or diagrams to visualize the progress and not just um, view a lot of tables. Last but not least, there's visibility. You want to collaborate with other, another company, so obviously you want to share some information. However, you probably don't want to share all the information you have. There might be some internal tasks or data which needs to be protected in your systems. So with all these requirements in mind, how can we address them for our collaboration? In this talk, I want to concentrate on the good software team working in JIRA and possibly the other one as well. So let me show you um, some solutions how to collaborate together. Solution number one, use email to communicate. Everyone in an office world already has access to emails. There's no additional setup needed to get started right away. How does email address our requirements? Everyone knows how to write and receive emails. This communication therefore doesn't need much explanation. You write an email about all the details of the task that you want to transport to the partner and vice versa, your partner responds with questions or assumptions or other comments. However, it's quite some effort to manually update people about the progress while you probably maintain all that information already in your Jira and vice versa on the other side. Talking about responsibility, you can of course write an email to your partner um, to communicate, hey, I've started working on this topic, but is that information actually easily accessible? It's somehow hidden in your mailbox. This may work for a couple of tasks, but it's quite troublesome for bigger projects. Now, <laughs> how do you report on my emails? I usually search a lot of times, uh, many times, um, for a keyword in my mails and hope the right item shows up. Maybe you are one of the persons who keeps their inbox tidy and clean, but I guess you'd also agree that cre actually creating reports out of these mails is cumbersome and rather confusing. The visibility of the information can easily be controlled by setting the correct recipients. And since you can choose what to write in the email, you can exactly share the data you want. However, if a colleague later joins the project, it's not that easy to transfer all the information to him or her. Would you then forward a long email thread or 
What? So the communication is easy to you, but it requires significant effort for writing the mails. The responsibility can be expressed, but it's hard to have a good overview who's actually responsible for a topic right now. Reporting is a really big gap for me. You probably end up storing the information from emails inside your Jira and the content is only visible to the recipients. You can choose if that's good or bad in your use case. There's no obvious cost involved for such a solution. There's more the hidden cost, which is caused by a lot of manual work and that's progress for updating each other. So I'd recommend to only use emails for little external tasks, maybe for organizing the next company t-shirts. As an optimization of this method, you could also check out additional apps from the Atlassian Marketplace, which can help in automated ways to send out updates or even parse incoming information into Jira. However, that's too much detail for my presentation right now. So what other solutions are out there? Solution number two, why don't you give the users access to your Jira? If we assume the external users would also have the same level of access, then the communication would be super easy, right? You simply use Jira as you usually would do within your project team, writing comments, updating fields, transitioning from status to status. The responsibility, responsibility would also be easy. You can simply use the usual assigning field and you know all the time whose turn is it right now to act. Reporting would as well be straightforward. Using Jira's different views on issues and projects, for example, on a scrum board, or viewing a list of issues which you can further customize to see the columns and exactly issues which you want. Or also graphical reports, like here are the sprint reports, for example, but you could also use dashboards or other um, um, reporting apps around Jira. Even. Visibility is probably the biggest challenge for this solution approach. You want to make sure that the external users only see what they're supposed to. So on a project level, you can apply a permission scheme to control what all users can do in that project. Be sure to also check all the existing permission schemes that no external users accidentally have access to a project they shouldn't see. In addition to the project level, you can also control on the issue level if you want to make an issue accessible or not. Using an issue security scheme, you can restrict certain issues from your external users. If you use them, I'd recommend to set the standard security level per issue to the most restrictive permission and open it up later as needed so that no information is shared accidentally. If you want to go further, you can also control on a comment level the visibility of it here you can restrict it, for example, to all internal users. And there's still another level of visibility restrictions. You can also apply conditions to workflow transitions. This way you can control, for example, that only internal users can mark an internal issue, uh, can mark this issue as done, and external ones won't be able to do so. So if you give access to your Jira, every sim, everything seems to be quite and easy besides the visibility restrictions and some external cost, um, which you have to cover, of course, for every external user now as well. Even more interesting could be the user management for every external user. Onboarding is fairly easy, right? People speak up if they don't have the permissions they need, but how do you guarantee a good offboarding process? If an employee switches projects at your partner or leaves the company, will you actually offboard them right away? Will they? communicate with you in time that this is happening? I don't know. A big downside for your partner probably is that they can't track their work in their tool. So they can't view the work they're doing for you in the context with all the other work on their table, which might be as well then a downside for you if they, they don't manage the work as good as they could. I therefore recommend to use this approach rather for single persons, single freelancers, they still can keep all the the stuff hopefully in, in their mind. So are there any other solutions? Of course there are. You can also use a shared instance with your partner. So you start a new Jira Cloud instance and start collaborating. collaborating. Sounds too easy? Thinking about communication, responsibility or reporting, there are basically no changes, as if you crowded them access to your own instance. 
Visibility is probably getting easier. In the easiest setup, you simply don't need to take care of permissions or security schemes and be more open about it. With this clear separation from your other Jira instance, it also makes it a bit harder to view this project in the context of your other work which is happening, which is dependent on this one. The cost is obviously based on all users which need access, so the internal ones and external ones which form up this project team. So my recommendation would be use it for projects which have little dependencies to other projects, for example like prototyping a new idea, a new app innovation project with other and little dependencies. That was solution number three. I still have two more for you to talk about. Another way would be to share your Jira issues with the Marketplace app externally. There are several apps in the Marketplace which offer you to share one or multiple Jira issues with a link you might know from um, sharing Dropbox files, for example, or other cloud storages. You share that file, you maybe set a password, and this issue in that case is accessible via a link. For my talk, I've chosen external share for Jira, which is developed by Old Street Solutions, but you can transfer the concepts for the other apps as well. So here's the UI by external share, which looks similar to the Jira UI. Anyone who's able to access the, this URL can comment on the issue, can add attachments, switch the status, basically communicate with the other teams to make sure that the issue is crystal clear and can be implemented. Editing of the fields is not supported, but maybe this will come in the future for this app or similar apps. So the communication works quite well, I'd say. If you set up your workflow accordingly, you can also use that to express who's responsible at the moment. For example, having an in-progress externally status, you know the other parties we're going to and an in-progress internally, it's on your side, and the one who's the actual assignee should probably act. Alternatively, you can still use the comments to let your partner know about it. For example, who's working there right now on the partner side. When it comes to reporting, of course, your internal team can use all the standard Jira reporting mechanisms we talked earlier about. So there's the full power. Your partner has some views. There's, for example, such a board view. So in the context of this project board, for example, you could um, see the progress of the tasks, or another view would be a Jira filter, um, so that you just have a list of issues to get a good overview on that. Based also on these reporting things, that's where the visibility comes into play. You can share a board or you can share a filter, the views we've just seen. And so with this, it's basically one, like multiple issues which you can share at once. Only issues which are part of this filter, of this JQL query in the end, will be shared. You can also create shares for a single issue and have some control what people can see or do. So that's quite extensive on the viewing part. The editing part is a bit limited to status, adding attachments or comments. More to come probably in the future. So using an external share, it's easy to have a conversation and therefore communication going on. For expressing whose responsible statuses can be used to our comments. Reporting is great for yourself with all the Jira base your report, your partner has some reporting functionality to get an overview of the current tasks. The visibility is simple to understand. You share either a set of issues or single issues and also have some additional controls on the field level. Of course, there's some cost for this additional app. And the biggest disadvantage I see is that your partner can't see their work in context with their other work, which probably means that they're still duplicating some information. So my recommendation is use it rather for smaller collaboration projects. So what's the last solution for today? It's automated synchronization of your Jira projects. There are several apps in the Atlassian marketplace which offer you to synchronize Jira issues to other instances and back. You can configure the issue sync app to synchronize exactly what you want from your partner's Jira and to your partner's Jira. For the visualization in my talk, 
I've chosen Backbone Issue Sync because that's the app we develop, but you can also transfer the concepts here to other apps as well. For the communication, you can keep using Jira as usual, write comments, update fields, change the status. The Issue Sync app will synchronize the changes in the background to your partner's project. Since the user base is different, you need another way than only the assignee to express who's responsible. You can also introduce the separate workflow steps to express here. So waiting for partner could be another name or in progress on your side, or this in progress internally, externally, as we've seen before. Or alternatively, you can introduce a custom field, which team is responsible, and you give it the options if it is good software or great software in our example. If you choose that option, you will also synchronize then the field um, to your partner's side so that both sides can kind of make themselves, assign the issue to themselves. Reporting is easy again. Both sides have the full power of GR reporting, including boards, custom lists, dashboards, graphical reports, whatever you wish. Visibility-wise, you have also different levels how you can control what is being shared. For example, on a project level, you can define a JQL query in order to select a certain subset of issues you want to share with your partner. So really based on your criteria, quite fine grained. You could also filter or configure it even more on a field level. You can define what fields are being shared with your partner and which ones are not. In addition, you could share them as a read-only information or bidirectional. That's configurable based on your needs. For some fields, you can even go deeper and control fine grained for example, which issue links would you like to synchronize over and which ones not, or um, which versions, um, if they should follow a certain pattern. To sum it up, for the communication, there's no extra overhead. You simply work in your Jira. The responsibility can be expressed through statuses or custom fields. Reports are possible in all the native Jira ways, so you can use your usual Jira reporting mechanisms. The visibility can be controlled on an issue and field level. But I think the main benefit compared to the other solutions is that everyone actually works in their own systems. By this, both sides can see the issues in the context of the other work. They can plan sprints across projects accordingly. They can get an overview on a higher level, so no one needs to maintain a separate to-do list manually. Of course, there's also some cost for this additional app. In the nature of the apps is that there's also some additional administration effort when you change the Jira configuration. Imagine you change the workflow for one of these projects, then you'd also need to tell the issue sync app how it should sync the updated workflow, right? So my recommendation is use this for rather the larger or longer ongoing collaboration projects if you have an ongoing partnership with someone, for example. These were all the solutions I have for you today how you can collaborate across companies using Jira. So here's the summary of my recommendations again. Use email for the little external tasks or maybe the beginning of a project when you don't have another solution set up yet. Give someone access to your Jira who you mainly want to treat like an internal employee or like single persons working for you. Use a shared instance if your project is quite independent. For example, building a prototype um, or new version of an app. External share is an easy way to quickly share issues without much setup needed. If you have that in place, I also don't really see a reason why you would still opt for using email in some other cases. If you want to keep the overview in longer or larger collaboration projects, I'd recommend to go for actual deeper integration with an issues in gap. Of course, these are my recommendations only and you're free to draw other conclusions yourself and also based on your exact requirements. That's all from my side. If you want to ask questions, visit the K15T food truck in the Velo after party or send us an email. We'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you for joining in.